Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. I must be. This is part of Koinonia, it's a culture of worship. In your presence. That is where I must be. In your presence, that is where I must be. Beautiful you are, wonderful you be. You are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward. You are glorious, my God, beautiful you are, wonderful you you are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward. You are glorious, just the voices, my God, beautiful you are, wonderful you've been, you are glorious. You're faithful in all your ways, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, beautiful you are, wonderful you are, you are glorious. 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 of his spirit and his power lift your hands 
fall like rain my father fall like rain spirit of the living God upon your people fall like rain receive it in fire and his power outside fall upon your people the power of God is touching people receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost lift your hands everyone for it falls like the dew of heaven rain upon your people oh God rain upon your people fall like fire quicken your people to a higher realm of power a higher realm of insight, a higher realm of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, let it cause your eyes to see, your ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you are exposed, to the presence and the glory of his majesty then you are changed it's an atmosphere it's not just a person it's an atmosphere this is why you can be touched from anywhere it's an atmosphere it's a circumference of glory that anyone that dares to plunge into it will experience the tangible change a quickening in your mind not every revelation can be taught some are byproducts of his glory it's a quickening of the spirit that's why we are exposed it's not just about falling down it's an atmosphere and the create the effect it creates in your spirit drink of that atmosphere it will change you of demons not in this place we believe in the works of Christ and this is a place for emancipation three people hallelujah you will be free for death cannot dwell in his presence he is light therefore in the name that is above all names three of you please ushers I need them here you will know three of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, at the count of three, that devil, that demon cannot stand. No, not in God's presence. Hallelujah. For he gave us authority over unclean spirits to emancipate his people. In the name above all names, at the count of three, one, two, three. There's one of them outside. That's one of them on the floor. Bring them. That devil is a liar. There's one outside. Two are inside. One is outside. One is in this room. That devil, I command him to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. For your name is holy. You are holy, holy Lord. The power of God touches the one person outside, under the influence of all kinds of 
manifestations of darkness. Holy, holy are you, Lord. of darkness let this guy go now come out of him in the name of Jesus every foul devil I set you free right now from every yoke of bondage there's one person outside please those outside lift your hands lift your hands those outside by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the light of God shine upon every darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost bring out that one person under the captivity of darkness. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it is fire upon you. No devil can stand it. You came here captive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Hallelujah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah it's not a verse of scripture it's someone's name Jeremiah who is Jeremiah you are Jeremiah This is not the Jeremiah I'm seeing. There is another Jeremiah. He's taller than you. Jeremiah. If you're Jeremiah, you can come out here. The Lord has a word for a Jeremiah. He's a guy. It could be your son name. I don't know. But you're taller than this gentleman here. The Lord shows me a word for Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Well, since you came out, let me at least pray for you. You don't come out here and receive nothing. Bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah, please, when you find that person is important, we need to pray for his family. Be seated. God bless you. Hug someone. Tell them I love you. Say it, hug someone, don't sit down. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone again. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, look at me. Look at me. No, leave her alone. The Lord says I should impart upon you the grace to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, fire on you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I welcome every one of you. This is Koinonia. We've been we began towards the end of last year considering a series on the full gospel. Hallelujah. Someone's auntie just gave birth. I'm hearing the cry of a child. 
in a labor room and the Lord says it's somebody's auntie that just gave birth just to announce don't just rejoice for nothing if it's not your auntie we're not lying here don't clap if your auntie is not pregnant the child will not jump out of the air hallelujah praise God Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we began a series on the full gospel. And then we had to pause. And now we'll continue. Hallelujah. The full gospel is a teaching that attempts to harmonize the several revelations of the spirit. That had been revealed to the church. Especially the church in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And... We began to examine the fact that the goal of the full gospel is to bring us into maturity. Hallelujah. That God in his character reveals himself in facets and dimensions. Hallelujah. And that as a result of pressing into God, several people through dispensations have been able to press into some dimensions of God. And have come up with certain revelations. Some of them have received exaggerations and imbalances hallelujah and the goal is to be able to bring the church into harmony and so we began to um, outline the fact that we'll examine the seven major doctrines that characterize the nigerian church hallelujah and we listed them number one is the gospel of grace number two the gospel of faith or what we know as the word of faith hallelujah number three What's number three? Hallelujah. You've forgotten. The gospel of holiness. Hallelujah. Number four. Demonology. Satan, demonology, and deliverance. Hallelujah. Number five. The gospel of prosperity. And we're in the sixth one. Tonight we'll be considering the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. You don't want to miss this teaching. This is a solid teaching tonight. The gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. In a street in the United States of America called Azusa, there was a great man of God who had a lecture and used to teach students called Charles Farnham. Hallelujah. Was a great man, fiery man of the spirit. This was during the revivals of the generals. Now they had seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They had seen miracles because people like Alexander Doway, um, people like, um, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Sorry? Yes, Maria Woodward Ita. And several people had carried the fire and the power of the Spirit. They had seen miracles. People like Amphi McPherson, the woman who would do stretcher only meetings. So they had seen the revivals of the Spirit. But then this gentleman would be teaching. And then racism was very strong in the Western world. Hallelujah. And there was a black, one eyed man. One of his eyes wasn't so good. It wasn't the case he was black and then he was one-eyed and so he wouldn't be allowed to join the school of ministry hallelujah and that gentleman would stand outside the class and just be listening and charles began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom began to expound scriptures just like koinonia and the guy would stand outside the only man in the overflow and he would listen hallelujah little would we know that that man would be the pioneer of what we know in proper to be the charismatic move of the spirit what we call the azusa street revival hallelujah it took the fire the manifestation it was said historically that the same way the flames of fire fell upon the apostles in acts chapter 2 that was the exact same way the flames of fire fell they saw it the cloven tongues it fell upon them on that street called azusa and it sparked a revival 
of the charismatic move of the spirit that men in mass he that told it used to be single individuals all right and then people come to receive but now it, there was a widespread manifestation of men demonstrating the character of the spirit solid power they did impossible things in mass and that fire began to translate from one city to one city one country to one country one continent to another hallelujah then somehow it fell in africa also and our fathers caught that fire hallelujah great men who walked in power not many of them are known alongside with men like apostle babalola we only know him because he's a founder of a ministry but there were many more hallelujah men and women who caught this fire suddenly men began to press into certain dimensions of god and they saw that the holy ghost can take hold of a man such that he begins to exhibit his character in that man hallelujah they saw ordinary men doing the deeds of god men who you couldn't stand close to them hallelujah meet us away from them you were under the anointing and they were exhibiting the character of another being just like a demon would possess a man and the man would assume the character of that demon hallelujah and the holy spirit began to give them insight and that sparked a dimension of power in the church like we have never seen And through the years, especially in Nigeria, we had great men and women. Now listen, don't confuse just the working of miracles or just provoking things through faith with the charismatic move. The charismatic move was a demonstration of the spirit. It wasn't just healing alone. Are you listening to me? It was a demonstration of the character of the spirit. Men who did things, it wasn't just healing the sick on the street. Their presence devils cried at their presence they did all kinds of they performed more miracles unconsciously than they did consciously hallelujah they would get up from a seat you come and sit back there and devils will leave it was an awesome display of the spirit it opened up a new and a strange dimension of the prophetic hallelujah and today we have great ministries who still carry that banner. Ministries like Christ Embassy. A typical replica of the charismatic move of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the power of the Spirit. In a charismatic move, it's not an individual that just... Are you following me now? Other moves, an individual carried the fire, then others came to receive. But in the, a, charisma, a typical charismatic move has the least person able to dispense... The things of the spirit there are ministries that you see one geo all right one geo if it's not around nothing happens but there are ministries that even if you call five people and say just go out they will be able to reproduce the demonstration of the spirit that's a charismatic move hallelujah the word charismatic comes from the greek word charis grace a demonstration of the grace of god upon a man hallelujah praise god and a lot has happened to this move over the years and tonight we'll be examining it hallelujah when you put on your television many things happen to you you smile you get angry hallelujah because there are different kinds of what we know today to be the charismatic move hallelujah First Corinthians 2, where is the foundation of this gospel of power? Please follow this teaching tonight. It's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians 2. It was that move of the Spirit that brought us into the consciousness of what we know as the presence of god people didn't know so much about the presence of god and the atmosphere hallelujah 
Now you hear people say, I sat down. Just like it's happening to some of you. And it's like electricity all over my body. Some of you are shaking, vibrating. This is a manifestation. It was that move that began to bring us into this consciousness. Hallelujah. Many people didn't even know what it stood for. Many of you get to pray and there are, there's all kinds of things happening to you. Warm sensation, cold sensation, fire on your eyes, your feet, your knees. You know, all of these moves of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. You don't want to imagine how I love teaching about things like this. Praise God. And I, brethren, this is Paul speaking. When I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech. I wish the church in Nigeria can read this verse again and again. Or of wisdom. This wisdom is Sophia, human wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Two, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in so much trembling. Verse 4, 1, to read. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Hallelujah. And so this became the foundation of what we know as the gospel of power. Hallelujah. Certain people were tired of a dead religion. Of people coming in, the sick would come in and go back. Demons would come in, escort people to meetings. And they would sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs for hours. And these demons would go back. People came oppressed and went back oppressed. And the Holy Ghost began to move in certain people and said, there is a dimension of me that must be opened up to the body. The spirit of power. That the power of the Holy Ghost can be accessible for a believer to wrought victories in righteousness. Hallelujah. Another scripture. 1 Corinthians 14. 4. Sorry, 1 Corinthians 4. There are great ministries that have this as their slogan. Ministries like Spirit Embassy, Hubert Angel. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Are you there? Want to read. For the kingdom of God is not in word. One more time. What do you understand by that statement? Hallelujah. What do you understand by that statement? If I say Jimmy is a man, not a woman. Is that clear enough? He said for the kingdom of God. In other words, the reality of the kingdom of God is expressed in the midst of men, not just by words. Words are not sufficient to be able to articulate the reality of the kingdom. It is in the demonstration of power. When the power of the Holy Spirit is made visible, comes into the scene, then people are able to see the reality of the manifestation of the glory of God. Are you following me now? And Paul said, when I came to you, you know why Paul said that? Because Paul was an intellectual. He was not just a dummy. I hope you understand. But he said, when I came, I didn't just come with oratory, the ability to combine words and speak nicely. For that alone is insufficient to bring you into the reality of the kingdom experience. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but I demonstrated something among you that proved the reality of the kingdom hallelujah so the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of 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 power seeks to tell the church that there is more to the manifestation of the kingdom of god than just speaking are you listening to me just a nice well prepared sermon and that true transformation that the body of christ will not come into the full realization of the kingdom experience both as um, an evangelical experience and as a charismatic Pentecostal experience just with talking. In other words, you can't keep talking to people about divine health 
Are you listening to me? You can't keep talking to people about healing. You can't keep talking to people about certain things. The gospel of power tells you that there must be a demonstration. That the kingdom of God is the expression of that kingdom. In number one, words. But number two, it is validated with power. I said the kingdom of God. In other words, the manifestation of the influence of the father is not just the issue of talk. Are you listening to me? Miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs. These are the visible manifestations of the glory of God. Please let me tell you something. The manifestation of the glory of God is not a cloud. It's not some mist. Listen, the beauty of all those things is that you leave that place with an experience. Are you listening to me? Say kingdom experience. Kingdom experience is not just in words. If I ask you now, what was the first message that was preached when you came for Koinonia? You cannot even remember. But if I ask you, tell me one remarkable experience. You say, ah, I remember I brought one brother that was just shouting, I won't keep quiet. Five minutes later, that guy was praying in tongues. That's an experience. Are you listening to me? People can forget talk and words, but an experience initiates them into the reality of anything. Hallelujah. This is why when you go to a herbalist, he doesn't do too much of talking, correct? He just bamboozles you with experiences. And you have to just calm down and say, this man is serious. He's not a talkative. For instance, as soon as you enter his place, you see him and then you don't see him again and then you see him. And he says, sit down. You say, Baba, I'll do anything you want me to do. One experience. Hallelujah. You're going to be understanding certain powerful spiritual keys about the gospel of power. So miracles, signs, and wonders are the visible manifestation of the glory and the kingdom. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, I'm telling you the gospel of the kingdom, Christianity, what we know as um, Christianity is powerless. If an unbeliever stands and tells you that I believe in whatsoever I believe. And a Christian comes and says, look, Jesus is Lord over all. He came and demonstrated victory over sin and over Satan. Hallelujah. And you are able to demonstrate it. That there is this gentleman, come sir, just a minute. Hallelujah. That this guy comes in a drunkard. Comes in drinking and smoking. And one encounter... With the power of God. No withdrawal symptoms. This guy does not have appetite for liquor again. Doesn't have appetite for smoking again. There is an experience. Are you listening to me? This guy, if you ask him to preach, he will tell you his experience. You know why many believers do not have messages? We lack the experience of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. This is why we borrow messages from YouTube, Google, all kinds of things. Authentic Christianity is supposed to be a byproduct of a tangible experience where you encounter the reality of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough to say this is this, this is that. There must be a proving, a validation. And this is why the Christian experience of many believers is not strong. Hallelujah. We can sing and chorus, Jesus is Lord. What manner of man is Jesus? He made the sea to, to, uh, to what? He made the sea to. He made the blind to see. He made this and that to happen. And many people with unbelief, he made the blind to. But you see, it has not translated into a real Christian experience. So, our unbelief has gotten so used to those songs, we don't even expect it. And when one person gets healed, they say, how oh, are you sure? Are you sure they didn't pay this guy? Oh, Jared, these people. You see, because we do not even expect that there is an experience. When a student is in school, you do what we call practicals, correct? 
when they are teaching you are sleeping they say mix this with this you are just yawning but when you get to the lab when you try it yourself you just smile because that experience has crystallized in your mind we have a powerless church because many believers do not have their knowledge of god backed up by an experience of the kingdom life so we talk about the holy spirit without any experience of him we talk about the concept of divine health we talk about the concept of prosperity we talk about the concept of the move of the spirit that god can transform a man but there is no experience say after me the kingdom of god is not in words but in power hallelujah and the reason why the manifestation, the gospel of power is cast in certain Christian circles is because of the sacrifice. Listen to me. Because of the sacrifice it takes. Many people are unwilling to contend for more with God. And so whatever experience they've had of God, for many it's just a salvation experience and a little of theological experience and we camp around there and the more we read theological books we believe that our knowledge of theology is equivalent to the knowledge of god and you see someone tells you have been a theologian for the past 10 years there's nothing you will tell me in this bible that i will not see but you know that this guy is being influenced by the spirit of anger He's telling you he knows everything in the Bible. One minute later, he just slaps you. And then he says, I, I, I do not even know. This guy needs, he needs help. Now he's telling you, I know everything. Hallelujah. And so we have many nice, wonderful messages. They give you the background. They give you every well-prepared sermon but with no power to change people not even salvation and you hear a lot of preachers say now with this message if you know you are not born again i pray that as you go back home the lord will help you to do something about this message can, can you imagine this is supposed to be an experience imagine an evangelist come on the pulpit imagine jakes for god's sake comes up and preaches i mean with power and says jesus save them he healed them he delivered them Say so now as I wrap up my message, I, I want to encourage everyone who came from far and near for this mega crusade to take seriously what I've said. I, I ask the Lord to strengthen you and uh, bring you to a point where you can see reason in what I've said. Now, hold on, hold on. You are talking to someone who just left his shrine. Are you following me now? This guy just left his shrine with a solid tangible experience and he came and met you making noise one PA one protocol here one protocol there and you stood and you were making noise and his native doctor calls him and said please come back just forget about these noise makers hallelujah christianity begun supernaturally with power a woman without the aid of a man conceives that's a that's an experience hallelujah a man walks on water defying certain laws dies and brings himself back to life the entire span of the christian experience is rooted not just in word but in power the demonstration of power now please listen because I'm, I'm soon oh you will enjoy this message tonight believe me whenever i say power many church folks all you just think about is somebody falling down let's do it come two people one usher one somebody pastor Alpha, you are an usher come come sir do you know how to fall down all right just fall down no 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 hold on you are getting it. Okay, are you ready? Now, I oh yeah, fall down. This is what the church calls power. Shame on us. This is not what I'm calling power. So if you are thinking I'm talking of falling down, no, that's not, you are, you are in for a shocker. This is not power. For many people, this is just church jamboree. Because demons can do that.
A powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom of God. Many of you are not here because of our nice messages. Something happened to somebody you know, you, you, you know and you said, Kai, no, I will come and find out. Even if it's not true. We had a gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim, remember him? Some of you. That guy slept in the grave three days to get the power of invincibility. Three days in the grave. Saw dead men wake up and come out of their graves. They told him to lie down there. You don't get up. You don't do anything. The spirit of the, of the man in the grave that he was lying, they said they wanted it to come upon him. After three days, this guy got up. He could look at a baby like my little sister that came and shared testimony here and shoot her. No conscience. That guy came for koinonia and sat down outside. So imagine if we just came. A beautiful suit. Say, Hallelujah, somebody. Now this guy slept in the grave. Three days. A Christian experience. Elijah said, look, we are talking too much. If God be God, let him be known. If Baal be God, let him be known. Let's go and meet upon the mountain and settle this case once and for all. He said, the God that answers by fire, that is God. Elijah was so confident. He asked the people, he said, shout. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went strolling. And then when it was his time, he said, set me 12 stones. Let me show you something. I didn't come to discuss jargons with you. Set me 12 stones. He said, pour water on it so that you won't say by some chemical analysis, something happened and so pour water on it. Hmm. The Bible says fire came from heaven, licked up the water. Burnt everything. And Elijah said, now that you know, none of you will survive. He said, follow them. And he slayed all of them. Hallelujah. The church was advanced. Because men, you think the disciples were intelligent people. They didn't go to any Bible school. Jesus sends them. He said, go in my name. He said, as you go, go to the Lordship of Israel. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. The Bible says they came back rejoicing. Their first thing, it didn't say they clapped for me. I didn't know I could speak Greek like that. He said, even the demons, that was their first testimony, were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Many, we have all kinds of justifications because of the sacrifice it takes to contend for that dimension of God. So many people begin to give excuses. They say, it's not my calling. Did you see Jesus sending the 70? What did he call them? He told all of them, as you go, do the same thing. Listen, the fact that there are caterers does not mean every woman should not know how to cook. Correct? There are people called into certain ministries. The gifts of healing. But it does not mean, who don't you cook in your house? All of these things people give for lack of fire, we try to give all kinds of sugar-coated messages, criticizing people who are moving in genuine power. Now, note, note, note genuine power because I have another well-prepared dimension. You should know me by now. Hallelujah. We have been trained to contend with anything that is above and beyond our ordinary thing. How can a man just get healed? The lady shared a testimony now. How can an ovarian cyst disappear? Some of you are just saying, Jare, go and test with a real doctor. You see it? That's, that's a problem with a lot of people. You never were surprised how the growth formed from nowhere. But how it went down is what is surprising you. Someone will be sitting and his hand will start swelling. Nobody will ask from where the swelling came from. But when it goes down, we begin to complain. Someone had an ear. The ear starts eating up. You never say, is this not supernatural? But when no ear starts coming back, he said, like, like this one. At least Jesus, oh, we know. Malchus' ear, this is Jesus. So the church has been trained to reject anything that comes with power. But it is in that demonstration of power that Satan is silenced. 
Moses was a stammerer. He said, oh God. And God was angry. He said, in God's mind, he's saying, you don't need too much of talking. You don't know the experience I'm giving you. Pharaoh does not need English or Hebrew. Pharaoh needs a demonstration. Ten signs. And Pharaoh let them go. Not jargons. Ten signs. Demonstrations of solid power. Today in the church in Nigeria, learn how to speak your English. Know how to add your vowels and put all the consonants together. May God increase and bless you. But let me tell you the truth. When it comes to real transformation, if you want to be part of what God is doing, you need more than that. Brother, demons don't hear English. There's one language they understand. The Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your English. Through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. When Moses went before, before Pharaoh, it was a contention of mantles, not mouth. They threw it on the mantle of the spirit and the mantle of witches. That was a contention. Are you listening to me? The gospel of power. Powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom. One of the reasons why many churches have complained when they see crowds like this, for instance, they say, are you sure? These people are just coming like that. That's the point. Read Mark 1, 2, 3. I don't have time. I have other things. This is still an introduction. There are other things I want to talk about. Listen. In every man, we have a community and a nation and a world. Humanity is always in need of solutions. Are you listening to me? Let me give you the secret of solid ministry. Humanity is always in need. This is why God sends us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For as long as there is power upon you to meet the needs of men, they will come from everywhere to hear the word of the Lord and to be blessed and transformed. A native doctor is in the bush. I, I, I spoke to a guy. I think I shared it with you, uh, Jakes. I, I spoke to a guy who came last week. This guy had gone to almost all the major shrines in this country. Someone took him there. Hallelujah. He went to the shrines. And they took him to some pastors and they couldn't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. Shame on the church for allowing Satan just to prevail. And we laugh over it. And we say, I'm not called into this area. It's not my calling. It's not this and that. Which one is your calling? What is your calling? To talk? Say, my own is just to counsel people. Don't you know that people act the way they act as a result of the influence of demons? Say amen. Amen. According to Mark 1, 2, and 3, the biblical strategy for publicity to bring unbelievers and to bring people is the miraculous. The biblical, I'll show you. Let's, let's go to the book of Mark quickly. Anywhere there is a true manifestation of the kingdom and the glory of God. Now, don't you say crowd does not matter. Crowd does not matter in that... Um, God judges from a higher perspective. But without the people, who will you touch? The ministry is not to sit. Are you listening to me? All through the life of Jesus till he went to heaven. He always had people around him that he could minister the word to. Mark. Mark 1. Sorry. Are you there? Verse 21, the first recorded miracle of Jesus. As soon as he was commissioned, without delay, he casted out devils. Without delay. Mark 1, 21. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in a certain in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. Are you, is that in your Bible? So who does Jesus confront in the synagogue? An unclean spirit. Question. The demons in him, why do they allow him to come to the synagogue? Didn't they know that Jesus was going to be there? 
saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And so on and so forth. Verse 25, one to read. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Let's see the effect. 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? And what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit. And they do obey him. 28. Please read it if it's in your Bible. And throughout the whole region of Galilee. Question. Who were those who took that news to the region of Galilee? It's in your Bible. One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. Every time people are touched by God, they are too grateful to keep quiet. The gospel was not supposed to be a silent thing. There is an effect that the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to do in you that will stop you from being quiet. That's how the gospel spread. In the days of God's generals, their newspapers were full of the exploits of the church. Correct? But right now, our exploit, our church is, is full. If you see a story about a pastor, it's how he raped a lady, stole from a church, did something, or one, one saga somewhere happening. Or that they suddenly caught him, wanted to rob his oil, and then some one member caught him, and there's trouble. And in the evening, verse 32, I want you to help me. Maybe I'm the one who is not seeing it well. And in the evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and all those who were... For those of you who say, ah, whenever, the, I mean, the power of God comes and people, their, people are being delivered, they say, oh, there's no need for this. Go and read your Bible very well and tell me whether Jesus did not cast out devils. Hallelujah. Mm. Those who were possessed with demons. Verse 33 again. One to read. Look at this description. A city gathered at the door. At the door. At the door. Jesus just sat down quietly. And they were just bringing the sick. And the sick were going out. They saw one madman that had troubled people in the city. They said, come please, this way. The next thing the guy came out saying, say, how are you? Good afternoon. Another man next, he entered and came out. These guys entered the city and people say, no, we have to come and see. Critics say, I will go. Women tied their let's see, Let's go and see this thing. And the whole city, no posters, no mic, no, P, no PR department. Are you following me now? The biblical tool to attract people to see the works and the wonders of God is the manifestation of power. Hmm. Today there are evangelists in the world who do a lot of things and do not believe in the ministry of power. If an evangelist does not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, he's not an evangelist. He should go and sit down. He should be a lecturer in a Bible school. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick. Is that correct? Of diverse diseases. And did what? Cast out many demons. They were not small. And permitted not the demons to speak. Because they knew him. Hallelujah. Now verse 37. He had to be running away from people. And when they had found him. They said unto him what? All men seek for you in other words jesus was hiding the man said you better hide i have a serious problem i will sit down and die let me tell you if you offer real solution people will travel from anywhere and come to receive if you plant your church in a river the harbor is not living in a river what takes people there they drop their jeep and trek from here to like abu gate a dignified man he said i must get out of this problem i'm tired see let me tell you Every time you criticize the power of the Holy Spirit, the genuine power of God, you are a wicked person. Because you do not know those who are touched and those who are blessed. You see everybody seated in Koinonia. You don't know how many people have gone through things. Whenever you see demons leaving people, you don't know the relief this brings. 
Hallelujah. I assure you, if you are not receiving anything, you would have been tired of coming here by now. It's not because you love me. That may be part of it, but there's a bigger reason. You know that God is in the midst of his people doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. All men seek for thee. 38. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next town, that I may preach there also. For there, therefore came I forth. Are you ready now? Verse 39. I want to read. I want to show you the secret of real ministry that many pastors have not read. And I'll tell you why soon. 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and did what? There we see it again. There we see it again. He preached in their synagogues. It looks like the synagogue had a lot of demons. He casted out demons. Because the talkatives were speaking Greek. 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him, and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, we have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecure men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They just see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for a real solution. So, so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work. Because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. There are ushers are standing eyeing one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money and newspapers come and see the man of power you are not a real man of power because when benihin is coming to nigeria all the newspapers beg for an audience what is wrong with you you are running where god has not sent you powerless christians who will not humble themselves and listen hallelujah the bible says jesus was begging and say don't tell anybody let me tell you something have you had people complain and say it's because our church is too far for say our church is near it's not true it's not true it's not true all those things are just jargons it's not true say for say god gave me a land in port Harcourt or lagos but i would have been suffering you will be surprised you think people are idiots you see men of god are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again do you know what it means for someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia. You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks? Or they don't have anything to do with their lives? For the kingdom of God is not in the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power john sent 
He said, go and tell Jesus. Go and ask him. Are you the one to come? It was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom I see a dove. He is the lamb. He's the one that said, behold the lamb. Now John was under pressure and he said, go and ask this guy. In other words, I expect a level of demonstration. Now I'm in the prison. I've not seen it. Is he the one? And the moment they spoke to Jesus, we'll read that later on. Jesus just looked at them and said, watch me. He healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, healed people and said, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words, what in your law should be the character of the Messiah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32 of chapter 3. Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude. The mountain multitude. The seaside multitude. Everywhere multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I will show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. Many people have reduced the Christian experience so that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over. Everybody's looking. Nobody fell down. They just said this word, Jerry. This guy should go and sit down. Hallelujah. Miracles draw the people and then Jesus saves them. The biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous. Whenever there is an outpouring of miracles, an outpouring of signs, wonders, breakthrough, genuine breakthrough, that people come in and they receive the touch, the tangible hand of God, transformation in their lives, their families, their finances, their health, their understanding, their passion for God, then the kingdom has come. Hallelujah. Miracles are the tools that draw people to Jesus. And then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them. The clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person says, they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. While you are talking, it's only the women that will say, mm, and that's just because they have a heart for God. But when one crippled person lifts his crotch every sleeper will wake up sleep will disappear one time hallelujah when a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down let me tell you something the next day you will have to beg for a bigger venue Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Reinhard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. 
Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven notably sick people were there. He said by the next day, the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people. News. News. Let me tell you something. Genuine news does not need GSM to spread. Genuine, if it's genuine news, you just hold on. For instance, if they say your accommodation is open this night, ladies, many of you, even if you don't have phone, you will hear. That's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ. Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him. And this guy cannot sleep again. He's calling my old mother, my uh, uh, sweetheart, or my honey, or my sugar. And your old mother say, hey, hey, hey. The demonstration of the kingdom. When two of them hold their hands and come to church, your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice. Hallelujah. Say, I believe in miracles. Say it, I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination and all kinds of things. And you pack in and you do an introductory prayer session around the house to highlight them that one who carries true fire has come. And they receive the reverberation from their house. And then you go out and meet the man and say, I'm your neighbor. And by the grace of God, I've paid for two years. The man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that remaining two years. When people say, hey, this woman, they gossip about it. They say, this woman is a witch. I saw her. What are you doing about it? And you see believers so helpless. Your child is coughing. They say, I know. They want to make money with him. Hey, hey, hey. This is how this boy will die now. What you need is a gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place. And says, what is going on here? And they say, this woman wants to. They want to do this and that from the village. Work all kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? They say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy. See, the Bible says, Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law. Sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted. I said, go and serve us, Jare. We are hungry. Power. Through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And, wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir. You the last person sitting here. Hmm. What kind of life is that? You look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye. Say, me, let's ask, oh, is this guy well? Is this guy well? See, we need a church with genuine, authentic power. Hallelujah. The miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive Christ. That's why after the miracle service, when we make altar calls, there are some brothers you see coming out, you know it's God that brought this one. The way the guy is even coming out, he's even surprised. What is bringing me out and he's still coming? You see him standing and wondering as if someone brought him out. Of course, it's the power. It's called anakazo, the compelling power of the spirit. Hallelujah. But the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles. You center your ministry around Jesus. This is where my preaching of the balance starts. Because you see, 
The miraculous is not a teaching, it's a demonstration. You just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry is all about miracles, miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ, God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. If at the end of all your display of power and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet, people do not come to the genuine knowledge of Jesus Christ, you did not glorify God. I don't care how charismatic it was. So you don't center your ministry around Jesus, around miracles, but Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, if I, not if wheelchairs be lifted up, not if crutches be lifted up, not if tumors be lifted up, not if dead people be lifted up, if I, Jesus, the son of the living God, be lifted up, I will draw all men. So miracles are tools. Are you listening to me? They are tools that bring people to Jesus Christ if they do not come to the practical saving knowledge of Jesus Christ then something was wrong hallelujah but now we see that there is what an error in the church still among the charismatics that an emphasis has switched away from who Jesus Christ I want to ask you a question. How many times have you heard preachers mention the name of Jesus in many pulpits? For many people, it was last year. And they preached four times into the new year. They raised offering. They talked about vow. They talked about first fruit. Prophet's offering. But they did not mention the name Jesus. Hallelujah. They played documentaries for hours about the man they just so slow motion he stands and heals the sick and does every kind of thing he wants to do and then he does everything and at the end of it nobody says anything about jesus and people share the man and he's so happy jesus is absent hallelujah jesus must become the center of our ministry not apostles, not prophets, not miracles, not money, not wisdom. But Jesus. Say Jesus is the center of my life. And everything that I do. Say Jesus is the center in Koinonia. Yes. May God forbid the day that we will forget about Jesus. And start marketing ourselves. And marketing power. I'm marketing Joshua Selman. I'm marketing all kinds of things. May God forbid that day. Where Jesus will stop becoming our focus. Either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men by myself. The reward for lifting him up is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him. Because he said, I will draw. Hallelujah. There are so many people in the church right now. Now listen. Because of this pressure of miracles, miracles. Right now, listen. There are so many people under pressure. It takes a while, write it, for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life. It takes the dealings of God. It takes the pruning of God. You must be proven genuinely. I'm telling you, if you want to walk in authority, Authentic power. Authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with God. Many of you see men of God who are anointed. Hear their stories and their sacrifices first. And then you will know why God has rewarded them. If I begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see. Forget about the suit. Don't be deceived by it. Behind every glory there is a story. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of authentic Christian power. But right now, there are many men of God. 
They don't talk about Jesus. They have no regard for the word. But there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches. Something is wrong. Say after me, something is wrong. And this is what I'll be rounding up with. We'll stop wherever we can stop. It's a series. I don't want to rush it. I want to take it in depth so that you get it. Hallelujah. As a result of the craze, knowing now that the miraculous brings members. And for many pastors, more members means more what? More money. Thank you. So you know. More members mean more money. More honor. More prestige. When you stand in the midst of other pastors, say you have many members that hey, small boy. Why can I sit with you? How many? 5,000. I say, here we can sit now. I'm trusting God for expansion. And you hear men of God sit down. How many members do you have? How many members? And then the other one who has only 30 gets intimidated. And the guy says, you see. Three months later, the guy is breaking. He said he caught one principal. Oh, God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches. Right now, there are all kinds of... Any man, whether prophet or not, if you cannot see, if you cannot hear, sorry for you. And the Bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so. Right now, when people come in for meeting and they see the man of God say, let's go straight to the word. He say, ah... No falling down, no nothing. Uh, oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. Say, so what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still walking with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one. We have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? Different men of God. I'm telling you, they have mixed their wine with water. I read an article, verified article. You read it, Jangfa, yesterday. About a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja, including a popular bishop. Now, I don't just read junks and come and talk to you. Are you listening to me? I have common sense. I know that this message will go as far as can go. So if I talk to you, these things are verified. Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article. Praise God. The article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman. Shameful immoral acts that should not even be mentioned. And then after that, there are different kinds of oil. And according to, this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back. The most popular oil right now is called seeing oil. They wash your eyes with it and you just look. You can see everything. Hallelujah. Everything. That's why you see every man just looks. You are this. You who just got married. And he moves in dramatic accuracy. Because with that in two weeks, he can triple the membership. Because the truth is people have needs. Are you listening to me? People have genuine needs. When they see real solutions, they will go. They will go. They have genuine needs. And this man is receiving money. Of course, if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed, ah, 
Can't he take half of it and say, Pastor, I would have gone to India. Now you have helped me. Let me reduce your board in the ministry. If, if you one day you can make five million, is that not a lucrative business? Answer me. And then he buys another one. Rub it on his eyes. These men sleep with women and do all kinds of things. Minutes to their, their administration to maintain some of these powers. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Then the next one, they called it do as I say. Aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are? Anything they ask them to do. The newspaper one time recorded how that some people, members went to church naked. Remember the article? Some people don't read newspapers. Hallelujah. Members. Imagine a father and a mother say, are you ready now? Kids, let's go. That's what happened. Madness in the body of Christ. They enter the church naked. No, see when I say naked, I'm not talking of Jesus of Nazareth kind of naked. Naked. Can you imagine everybody in Koinonia here naked? What is wrong with us? Yes, but that's what happened. That cannot be normal. The spirit of God is not an idiot. We have misrepresented the Holy Spirit to the, to the world. God is, not, God is not a daft person. Please, let's not make Jesus Christ look like a stupid person. Hallelujah. And when you get that kind of oil, you can do anything to anybody. That's why you can see a man who buy his house. They just cut the scissors of the house. Next week is the pastor that packed inside. Brother, what happened? They say seed. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. When, when you see genuine things, you celebrate them. Manipulation and witchcraft. I was told of a man of God that saw a beautiful plot of land belonging to one of his members. The guy just pressed, hey, hi. And the lady said, what is wrong? And I said, you will die now. And she called her brother in UK. He said, let's give this man the land. Oh. They gave the guy land. He erected a structure quick on it. Now they are, they are in the court. The land is worth 80 million. The man manipulated them into sowing it to him. What if that man were your father? You will not enjoy for years, Kenan. Because one man of God has come to manipulate your, your, the, des the financial destiny of the family. Are you listening to me? And then the next oil is specifically for ladies. Hallelujah. According to the article, they say it's called touch and follow. I have been amazed at the, the vulnerability of many ladies to men of God. It looks like they don't, men don't have wombs. They don't get pregnant. So, a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable, you see a man of God just looks at her. They come for conferences and welfare. The ladies that serve them, after serving me water like this, you just look at her and write as if God spoke. Later, they come to meet you in the hotel room. Man of God, your message was powerful. The next thing, that lady won't come out of that hotel room again. What, what kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church? I was speaking with Jake the other day. I said, I don't know how people reason. Aside from the fear of God, I was discussing with Jake. I said, what if I tell you now, let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good. Hey, you can imagine. This is what I think about. Oh. I don't know how the men of God talk to the ladies. I was telling Jake. I said, Jake, now imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, you've preached this against us and you ran away. Your, your prayer now will be let like nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. <laughs> this is how I'm thinking. It is my simple thought. It may not be your own, it's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. It said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything, that passing scared. You are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry. You better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. 
You see a lady, tell her to come and spend weekend in your house. You say you are, you are prayer partners. What, what is partner? What is prayer partner? Stop it. Stop it. If you are doing it, stop it. I'm not joking. See, this is what kills grace. So you see a man who is fiery. Tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again. I'm not saying don't be nice, don't relate. We relate with people. But that you must take an oath before God. And say, oh Lord my God, by your mercies would you help me. It's not by the strength of a man. But let me tell you something, there must be a determination. All the guys stand up. Stand up. Say in the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk in true holiness and walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus, I make up my mind not to defile myself by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive grace to say no to sin, to say no to anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And no Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies, stand up. This is Koenonia. Stand up. Please, we are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. You don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power above and against immorality. Say, in the name of Jesus, no man, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle would deceive me and mislead me to abort my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive strength to run with the spirit of Elijah away from every appearance of evil. I receive wisdom. I receive courage. And I receive power. God bless you. Be seated and celebrate Jesus in this place. Let's know that there can be real Christians in the body of Christ. For once, let's trust the power that comes upon the altar. That is not every anointing that is polluted. There must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of God. There must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching. Because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me. But I will say it. You know me. We will say it. Koinonia is where you will hear it as it is. Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings because people have been pressured all kinds of anointing there is the one for pulling crowd pulling crowd you rub it on your chairs you rub it everywhere members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again you see people fighting at home you must come to our church you must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now, some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for Koinonia. Say, you will see. Just pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say, you won't come and see our pastor Abi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. 
It's a year of supernatural exploits. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. Say no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls down. No. They must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preach and say, oh, when God says, go, you move. And he say it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down and say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you announce that, ah, I went to one program yesterday. That man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest he be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying on hands. Anybody you just you say, oh sir, the oil of your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual, He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is there are people who are struggling with things. Alright? But you see their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit together with the man's hand. He held his hand. He said, no way. Not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading. And come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here, innocently, who became victims of some of these people. The spirit of Christ, when imparted upon you, will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus. And all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of him and less of you. And so could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 
this thing has happened to some of our families are you not are there not some prophets that came to your house from that day your father cannot become himself again your mother cannot become herself again they, you will carry your money like this they are paying your father he, your mother does not even know he's going to go and meet the prophet in are, are some of your families not suffering it say yes because it's not a lie they brought one candle they brought one prophetic oil for them to buy your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rub that oil oh. you must rub it they said something is wrong the next thing he had three cars now it's only one where did two go the prophet will drive it and enter your house and say how are you doing is well he knows when to discern when they pay your father and he just comes your mother is tired of him he comes he says sorry i don't like salt in my own fish your father says, oh yeah, yeah 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 go and make new fish for the man of god they come into families and wreck that families i assure you they are devilish i don't care who because the true spirit of christ the bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation not breaking apart so on one side we need to walk in the power of the holy spirit as a demonstration of the kingdom but then we must be careful lest our entire attention be upon miracles and then we allow pressure that's why i told you that the authentic power of god comes with a process we we're talking with john Fire yesterday and i told him i said see the way the church is listen to me i read my bible oh. do you know there are many churches right now because of the way the church is there is even no need to read your bible because they don't even give any respect for the bible the members don't read bibles i follow me now nothing happens and then we have the generation of ipads you can buy your ipad but carry a hard copy bible and come for koinonia with it hard copied bible because very soon now you stop coming with ipad you come with phone alone very soon you just put two tracks on your pocket and the next thing you're on your way to hellfire Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. Are you listening to me? There are great men of God, Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get to the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything carry your bible carry a good notebook you don't carry your ipad to class you carry an exercise book as your teacher is writing you write that's how you become a good student carry ipad and see how many courses you carry over hallelujah we're going to pray next week i'll consider what the bible calls the doctrine of balaam we are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We we'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon, to go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they send royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, you people should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. And you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation. To the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I will share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites. Moabite women. To be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them. But I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. It's in the Bible. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit. Inside and outside. Just warm yourself in the spirit.
Kante prakate kalaraba. Rasta pakate kete belereba. The word of God building us, making us strong, giving us wisdom. Rekete ke praskata balaraba. Say, Lord, I open myself to the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, move through me. Let me become a manifestation of the glory in miracles, in signs, in wonders. Pray. Say, Lord, I open up myself to heal the sick, to cast out devils, that there be a demonstration of the Spirit through my life. Pray. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And he has anointed you to preach glad tidings to the poor. To set the captives free. To deliver the oppressed. To raise the banner of authentic power. Genuine power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Say Lord, walk through me. Do impossible things through my life. Lift your hands and say these hands are blessed. Say these hands heal the sick. These hands will liberate nations. These hands will liberate families. Lift your hands to the heavens. Say Lord these hands will open up the gates of nations. These hands will bring the power of God to bear. These hands will enthrone Christ. Say Lord move through these hands. Move through this body. Rededicate your body as an instrument for the glory. Rededicate your body. Say, Lord, move through my body. Every fiber of my cell, a superconductor of power. I open the gates of healing, the gates of breakthrough, the gates of prosperity. Pray. In the name of Jesus, say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm not ordinary. I'm a walking wonder. I have the name of Jesus. I go in that name. I do exploits. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Lord, I do exploits. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Now you're going to pray and say, Lord, put your power upon my lips. That when I speak to sinners or the sick or the oppressed, let a two-edged sword. The Bible says he was upon the horse and out of his mouth proceeded. He said, I have given you the tongue of the learned. Pray. Say, Lord, anoint my lips. Let me release the fire. The power of the Holy Ghost. As I bless, bless the man. As I prophesy, let there be a performance. As I speak the word of faith, the word of healing, the word of comfort. Make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and we're out of here. I'd like you to pray. We're going to lift up all the men of God that are being derailed. Are you listening to me? In a vain quest for power, some of them are your pastors. If you love them, lift your voice. Pray for the church of God. They may not be your church members. We don't believe in just denomination and membership. But the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Help the pastors in Abuja. Help the pastors in Lagos. Help the prophets in Portacot. Oh God we pray. Deliver them from witchcraft. Deliver them from error. Pray for your pastor. You know he loves God. You know she loves God. They are just being derailed. 
Say, my God, according to your mercy, bring them back. That they will denounce the hidden works of unrighteousness. Pray for them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. They love the Lord. They are just being misled. Pray for them. Mercy, oh God. Mercy. We pray for the church in Zaria. Our territory. Our Jerusalem. We pray. Let there be authentic power upon our pulpit, oh God. Let God's people not be deceived anymore. Through dreams, angelic encounters, reveal yourself to these men, oh God. That they may repent and turn away from every work of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point. Sorry, I know we're out of time. There are free buses. You are going to pray for yourself. That you will not start now. See, let me tell you something. Listen. Many of you have not experienced fame. Hear me. Many of you do not know what honor looks like. You don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion. Job said, when I walked, the elders bowed their head when they saw me. The young men talked about me. When my road was with butter, there is a way God will honor you that if you are not careful, you can shift away. Lift your voice and cry. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Lift your voice and cry. There are many of you, you've not even seen anything in your campuses, your little fellowships. You're already bragging and making noise. Say, Lord, help me tonight in Koinonia. That Jesus alone will be lifted. Not E and I, not Koinonia, not your pastor's name, not your ministry. If I be lifted. Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion. Beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. I know that, see, we must take evangelism serious. Evangelism has gone out of the church of Christ. Many things is here now. Money, fame, apostle. God will give you those things. But we must restore the passion. When somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again, nobody says anything. They talk about a changed life. People trivialize it. But if you say you bought a new car, people stand up. I'd like you to pray in one minute. I know we're out of time. Say, Lord, if your heart beat is souls, I repent for trivializing it. Lift your voice and pray. My God, I pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people. Let Koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism. There are hundred level students scattered. Save them. I deliver you from fear. The fear of men. 
I deliver you from it. You will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul. Someone saved you. Someone preached to you. You must take the banner of soul winning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If souls do not come to the kingdom, let me tell you we are joking. Are you hearing me? If souls do not come to the kingdom, we can do our jamboree. But I tell you, we have no notice in heaven. Thank God for the cars. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for falling down. But how many people can say, I came to know the Lord Jesus? How many drunkards can you bring to Koinonia? That someone will say, I was a drunkard. You know your classmates. Some of them are not born again. You are, you are not doing anything about it. You are there bragging that you are walking in power. You will never see miracles until you truly need souls. If you are not ready for soul winning, you don't need the miraculous. Whether you are a singer, whatever you are, you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus. What if they get angry with me? Jesus hung naked on the cross. What will you not give up for him? The programs on campus, listen to me. I know there are many campus presidents. Make sure your programs this session are evangelistic in nature. We are tired of jamborees around. Make sure whatever it is that you do, let there be an ardent passion for souls. You must give people an opportunity to be born again. Say I'm a soul winner. Don't just get them born again and throw them. Follow them up. Help them to be strengthened. That way you can know you are doing ministry. Not when you have PA and PA and this and you have There are people who have all kinds of jargons on the walls and the room of their houses. And they are not satisfying the scriptural conditions to be, become these things. And we read a lot of books that say, sit down, wake up in the night, just look at it. Let it enter your subconscious. Be careful. There is a balanced view about the power of imagination. And there is an erroneous, occultic, new age metaphysics understanding that is leading people into derision. Are you getting my point now? Faith is action everybody say it listen if you have not yet taken action you have not manifested faith i don't care what else you have done listen please if you get this revelation many of you as this word is coming you will walk out of your sick body at once because of the power of this revelation i will show you from scripture help us holy spirit which word is correct now Wow, I have to rush. There is no faith without action. Impossible. There is no faith without action. Hallelujah. I always give an example. Um, let me use somebody. Mike, come. I'm going to call this gentleman. Please, everybody concentrate. When I call you, say you are coming, but don't come. Mike come what did I ask him to do he's saying he's coming did he come Mike come and take if you can live where you are and come here by reason of your trust take this is what a lot of believers are doing we start dreaming nonsense thinking we are manifesting faith there are conditions God is saying fulfill that condition and take we are busy standing and saying, Oh, I know. I just know. I know it will happen. No. It doesn't happen that way. Bless you, sir. Everybody say, Faith is the action taken based on my conviction of God's word, His love for me, His integrity, and His ability. That action is what the Bible calls faith. Are you getting something tonight? This is an eye-opener for many people. Because you will see that 
what a lot of us are calling believe, believe, believe is not true. We are not manifesting faith. Faith, the faith life does not make you an idiot. We have turned this faith thing to become as if we are foolish people. Read your Bible. Those who walk in authentic realms of faith did not behave the way we are behaving. Hallelujah. Let me show you a few scriptures. Matthew chapter 9, if you can help us very quickly, media. Matthew chapter 9, from verse 18 to 22. Remember the woman with the issue of blood. Just write it and look up. Matthew 9, from verse 18. Hallelujah. Uh, let's just go to 19. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood. How many years? 12 years. Came behind him and did what? She did what? She came and took action. Is that true? She did something based on a conviction that she had. What was the conviction? 21. For she said within herself. That's where many of us stop. Is that not true? oh i know if jesus passes here if i may but touch his garment while she said that she was waiting when she saw jesus she said crowd protocol fire this night the bible says as she touched it do you know if she did not touch him that's how she would have remained like that is that true and that will make jesus look as though he was not powerful see in action is the missing component in our faith equation we do every other thing but take steps as simple as what i'm telling you is is the reason why many people will never be delivered many people will never be healed many people may never experience the blessings of god another story john 5 from verse 5 to 9 remember the impotent man very interesting story john 5 jesus always demanded action john 5 and a certain man was there which had infirmity how many years 30 and 8 years is that true look at me he never got healed because he did not take action is that true verse 6 we have to run and jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there a long time in that case he said unto him will thou be made whole verse 7 the important man started giving all kinds of explanations verse 8 like many of us are giving and jesus said unto him look at me how can jesus tell a man who has been lying down for 38 years who cannot move he said rise take in other words prove your conviction by doing something you have never done 38 years jesus is not an idiot he sees a man lying down just to move to a pool close to him he could not move for 38 years now jesus says you claim you trust me if you believe i'm the messiah stop giving me that grammar rise up in the moment you take the action the power of god comes in it does not take a long time this is faith the action you take based on your conviction let's look at a few more mark 2 mark 2 mark 2 verse 1 to 12 but let's just look at verse 4 mark 2 verse 4 we have to hurry up this is already the miracle mark 2 verse 4 listen when they could not come nigh unto him for the press they uncovered the roof look at me Jesus was holding a crusade. Is that true? Is that true? Those sitting outside say amen. So the Bible says there were people packed full inside and outside like this. Is that true? And Jesus was teaching. And certain people were desperate. And they said today you have been a liability to us. You must stand up. We are not ready to take you back home. And the Bible says when they came, they saw the crowd. The people said the owner of this house we will negotiate after the miracle. But for now, they got do you know what it means jewish do you know how jewish houses were made they were made with mud you would have to break through look at what the bible says they uncovered the roof that was and when they had what 
they broke it jesus was just sitting down and he had some people hitting i'm sure others were saying don't disturb us say keep talking i will keep manifesting faith when i get what i want i can tell you sorry the, listen 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 the bible says wherein the sick of palsy lay i want to show you something that will shock you now next verse please ah, yeah, 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 yeah. when jesus saw what what was their faith their action their action that that step they took based on their conviction the bible says faith can be seen it's not some metaphysical thing i can know whether you have faith by the degree of your adherence to the principles i can see it and know whether your faith is working you you can't fool us and say i have faith if you have faith see james said show me show me your your works without faith and i will show you my faith through the action that i'm taking what does that mean that you came here with cancer do you believe the lord will heal you yes i believe that's why i came that's good step one when the word of god comes that's the time to shake off cancer from your body and say cancer you had the prophetic word shake it off don't just sit down you are wondering no two more scriptures quickly luke 17 this is an interesting one the story of the ten lepers verse 11 let me show you the dynamics the spiritual technology that is responsible for the miraculous i pray that your eyes will be open to see verse 13 please let's hurry up listen the bible says there were 10 lepers who have been discussing is this how we will continue abby people will come and drop offering or whatever for them and the bible says they had that means they had been they had received an assurance that jesus was able to do it is that true now watch what happened this was their first manifestation of faith when jesus was passing what happened they lifted up are you getting me now and they did what the bible did not say they lifted it and just they just whispered to lift up means they shouted and they said jesus master you know jesus doesn't walk alone i'm sure his peers were saying hurry up they said we may be crippled but our mouth is not crippled we are going to shout till we get your attention listen did jesus respond that's how he will always respond when we manifest faith next verse and when he saw them he said unto them listen hi i love jesus goodness he just said the only reason why you are calling me is because you think i can help you if you really believe stand up go and show yourself as simple as that no grammar of saying okay if i said this then thee should grammar that thing we do is not called faith if you take action god is committed listen the bible says and it came to pass watch this as they this is the dynamics listen i want to explain something powerful here as they they were that means their being clean was tied to their going as they they were this sign shall not go before if you prove god sent you start moving and he said the signs the signs will follow those who can act this is why we are here tonight hallelujah just one last scripture and then we'll pray goodness my spirit is fired up john 9 let's look at one example of one blind man john 19 verse 1 to 8 but we'll just look at verse 7 jesus came look at me there are so many interesting people that do lots of things in church do you know that there are people that when they come when hands are about to be laid on them they say don't lay hands on me just speak you are a sick patient the doctor said turn for injection you say i don't like injection walk out of the hospital as simple as that 
when there's a way the sickness will press you that even if the syringe is the type they give a cow you say just give me when you still have options you are not yet pushed to the wall look let me tell you there is a way life will push you to the wall that you must react are you getting my point verse 7 are we there John what did I say John 9 not 19 9 listen look up please let me just tell the story quickly remember the man who was born blind the Bible says Jesus spat on the floor correct and he started making clay I can imagine the, well the man could not see now watch this Hiya, I love Jesus Jesus inspires me I'm telling you he said unto him to who the blind man Jesus was not talking to the person who was holding his hand he spoke to the blind man he said oh God go wash in the pool of Silo which by interpretation is sent and the Bible says he went his way therefore and washed and returned see how will Jesus speak to a blind man oh yeah I've done my own part if you like sit down here for one week if you are interested go and wash remember what the prophet told Naaman he said go to Jordan and bath while he was giving all those confessions I will not go I will go I will not go he said continue if you want to manifest faith carry two of your legs march to Jordan he was saying are there no other river this is many people think it just stops at talking 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 Naaman was talking rapping standing in front of Elisha's he didn't even come out he said tell him go and wash and do it seven times he went there it was a very muddy water hallelujah bath the first time nothing happened he was getting angry but when the word is fulfilled God is committed I can imagine the Holy Ghost just roaming around that pool number two he could not move because until your obedience is complete number three the guy could not move at a point he would say oh God he said seven times seven seven that was the word number five he would have just left and gone back and the Holy Ghost would say two more times for my spirit to come in listen the Bible says the moment he entered the seventh time he just came out and he saw his skin that means the Holy Ghost was waiting anxiously you do your part you do your part and see the power of the highest you do your part and see that cancer melt you do your part and see that curse broken in your family hallelujah at the beautiful gate there was a man there the Bible says he begged for arms is that true Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer and the Bible says he was begging them he was not begging to stand up because he did not believe are you getting me so he had no reason to take action because he was not convicted but Peter did something because faith comes by hearing when you hear of someone's ability he said mr. man I don't have money to give you but there is something I have in the name of the Lord Jesus if you believe I have this he said stand look up the man sat down there and was looking at them and was wondering and Peter remembered the teachings of Jesus and the Bible says Peter held his hand and said stand up and the Bible says he leaping he leaping he leaping the Holy Ghost was moving Peter get this man to take a step in every area of life listen there is a role you have to play are you getting me there's no time i would have shown you how that for every area of your life when the word came in samaria by this time tomorrow nothing happened but the power of god was moving waiting for those who would take action all the people in the land including the emojis did not go and the spirit of god went to four lepers they said will we stay here and die we are lepers but let's stand up the bible says when they went 
the, the enemy started hearing the sound this is the amplification of the spirit the sound of chariots until there is action you are not manifesting faith if you can get this teaching tonight by the time you are coming for february miracle service you'll be shocked because see this as simple as what i'm sharing is this is the missing link you are praying and fasting but you have not found out the conditions for prosperity it's not demons it will not change till the day you find out and walk in it are you getting what i'm saying there are keys that's your part when you see listen i submit to you with all humility are you seeing this crowd that are gathered they did not come by magic if you think it's by magic try it people are not idiots are you getting my point i said by with all humility i hope it doesn't look like i'm bragging i'm just trying to communicate a point do you know what it means for people to come and sit on the fence sit everywhere there are keys if you don't have it you don't have it but when you find it i can imagine the holy ghost based on the conviction he gave us while we started preparing as decoration was working the power of god said now you are responding based on what you believe i'll do tonight therefore let me begin to bring all the people to honor the word don't you see that this is how faith works listen there are many people who will never marry because they are waiting until the day a sponsor or a donor gives them two million god has spoken to you marry in june how much do you have hundred thousand but god said start moving he said hey lord I, this girl's parents the way they looked at me that day what is your business this sign shall follow the moment you are going your uncle starts calling and says i just felt like calling you he did not just feel the holy ghost the one who confirms the word hallelujah listen the sister who gave a testimony about the change in her result imagine if they prayed for her now a prophetic word had come is that not true she sat down she said lord i believe your word what did she do she got up as she was did you see that when they checked they did not find her paper but God said, am I too small? And you just dropped the paper on the table. Did you not hear the testimony? Listen, when you play your part, I'm telling you, in an inexplainable way, God is committed. And tonight, I want you to know that your part is to have come. See, I tell people with all humility, that for coming to this ground alone is already 50 percent of your problem so you know why hold on if you know the demonic forces that as many people hear what happened this morning and the way the devil tried to stop them from coming many of you will agree with me that things came up some of you didn't even have money but you said if it means trekking i will trek while you were trekking the holy ghost was saying mark them mark them practitioners of the world they must be blessed tonight some of you came outside and you still sat down your friend said let's go back you say i'm not going back you can go but this night although i'm outside my ministry must change my business must change this cancer must die rise up on your feet everybody go ahead and pray in tongues in one minute god is about to do mighty things in this place Rise up on your feet, everybody. Rekete ka ba 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 ba. Shekete le ka ba 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 ba. Zembros kele ba 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 ba. Sheka pa ka prada da 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 ba. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I'm convinced that you are able. You can change my story. Zima predi saka makata libregede bosta, ataka barregede bosta pali ya ba kasokotora. 
In a few minutes, the Lord will do mighty things in this place. In a few minutes, the Lord will do mighty things in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Please listen to me. I tell you the truth. I came here tonight with a very unusual unction. I know the things that I've been, the head of department, prayer band, he even sensed it. I remember he sent me a text. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost is in a place, nobody can tell the extent of devastation he can do to the kingdom of hell hallelujah inside and outside no matter how far you are make sure tonight as you hear the word listen i don't know the issue that you came here with i can only communicate the few because of time constraint and because we see in part I must not mention your case are you getting what i'm saying this atmosphere carries an anointing so no matter how far no matter what the issue is it will bow it will bow tonight hallelujah listen listen As I begin to rebuke sicknesses, we're going to be very fast. We don't have time for a lot of things. Hallelujah. God assured me that there will be dramatic, dramatic, instant healings. Dramatic, instant healings. Now listen, please. When we begin to pray, I don't know if we'll call the people out and lay hands or whatever it is we will do. Make sure, remember the teaching you must take action you must take action that action look at what our mommy shared remember the, the the testimony our mommy shared do you know that we brought i sent that they should bring a seat for her what she refused as a proof to the devil are you getting my point that that i may be old but i'm well are you ready to drop those chains now there is no need Please hear me. There is no need tonight to walk away with whatever situation. For there is a name. There are families represented here tonight. Tonight you will pass the Red Sea and you will part with Egypt forever. families under bondages yokes there are many of us who have come under spells it's time for us to check those devils out of the lives of people because the bible says upon mount zion 
there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession Hallelujah. I tell you, if you see what the Lord is showing me in the spirit, goodness, the devil is in trouble this night. Lift your hands, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Hallelujah. Hear me wherever you are. The power of God is going to begin to move across the crowd. And everywhere you are, there is a name tonight that is above every demon, every yoke, every spell. And at the mention of that name, devils will leave hallelujah hallelujah at the count of three wherever you are goodness there will be so much deliverances outside listen as i count three i want you to shout that name that's your action of faith at the top of your voice and we will begin to command this wicked spirit already the power of god is moving are you ready now one, two, three. Go shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. I call spirits. I call devils. Devils, come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Now, come out! Go cross the porta. Outside, outside. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Bring them out. The fire is falling outside. Lift up your hands. Oh, ye gates. I command spirits. Devils. Let those people go now. Bring them out. Bring them out. Outside, the fire of God is falling. The fire of God is falling. Outside, the fire of God. Every yoke, every cross, every covenant, every ordinance of darkness. Help the ushers, please. If they need more people, help them. Let's save time. Let's save time. We don't have time, please. The power of God is falling outside. Falling outside, falling outside, every spell, hallelujah, just those outside, lift your hands, the first overflow and the second, both of you lift your hands, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus, there will be a rain of deliverance, are you ready now, one, two, three, Shake it, 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 shake it
Hallelujah. Pastor, please follow me. We have to hurry up. Listen. Goodness. There are people here. Listen. You can't sleep sound in the night. Someone must come and sleep with you or oppress you. There are people who see snakes. This lady is one of them. Let her go. Come out now. Out. Out. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Ha praise kabala da da da. Out. Ha reta katale da ba. Hallelujah. Now listen, please, please. Let's hurry up. Just follow me. Just keep bringing them. Goodness. There are so many angels outside. Kapen de gambo. There's no hiding. Not in the light of God. Second. In Terekaba, Shapa, so close, Kebaya, Kebros, Kopoto, let her go now by the fire of the holy ghost i challenge you right now in the name of jesus break every chain out of her now now Come out of her right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. Let her go now. Now. Break every chain. Break every chain. Listen, listen, many of you don't know why, listen, hear me, please listen, let's hurry up. Do you know that behind the situation of many people are the workings of these wicked spirits? Listen to me, please. Don't let anybody fool you. There are some of you, you may not need to fall, but deliverance is already happening to you. So don't you think it's just those that come out? No. Once the word goes, some of you are already feeling things leaving you. Look, look at this girl for instance. You really believe a lady will have this strength, three people holding her? Wickedness is real. Leave her alone. On your knees and out of her. Quickly, just leave her. On your knees and out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Watch the power of faith, all of you. Watch, just... No, don't worry. Don't concentrate on her when she does it. Leave her alone. Listen. Listen. You see why it's good to be spiritual? Because now... One brother will just get up and come. You don't know where you are going. I'm not talking about her now. Please. Nobody should stigmatize her. Are you getting my point? One brother just comes and bounces. You don't know what is happening around the spiritual arena of somebody's life. 
you come and enter into something that will weep out. Look at, she cannot even go out. Look at, she's standing at the door. She can't even cross the door. She will go on her knees. Don't worry. You will see the authentic power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Behind the pain of many families is the operation of darkness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of our families, some of you as you are standing here, don't think God is visiting you alone. You should understand us here. Your salvation is not complete until your household is touched. These are the spirits. That's why you try and try. You keep doing. This is what has stopped the admission of others. This is what has stopped the marriage of others. This is what has killed the destiny of many people. But tonight, you will part ways with it forever. Now I want to pray. I see a lot of, many of you will be surprised what will happen now. Hallelujah. There are so many people that are tormented in their dreams. Listen to me. You can't have a sound sleep. But you see people come. Animals chasing you. All kinds of devilish demonic things. Snakes. Some of you having intercourse with all kinds of people. Whether a man, whether a woman. When you are about to go for a job interview. These things happen to you and that's the end of it. It doesn't matter what happens tonight. There will be a separation once and for all. Lift up your hands again. Please lift up your hands. Let's hurry up. Whether they are causes, whether they are yokes, whether they are manifestations of spirit husband, spirit wife, wherever that devil is, as you shout Jesus, I see fire. Fire will move from inside to outside. And many people will be delivered right now. At the count of three. Are you ready? Thank you, Father. Let your fire move right now. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Spirit husband, spirit wife, demons of darkness, ancestral causes. Go, 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 go. Serpents, scorpions, marine spirits. Out, 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 out. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. for all these people outside I'm speaking to the spirits now at the count of three the fire of God burns you out of these people every spirit 
hear my voice i speak from the realm of the spirit right now the fire of the holy ghost one You go and return no more. Leave them. Leave them. Go and return no more. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. You have peptic ulcer. Lay your hands on your chest right now. Quickly, please. Please, let's save time. Peptic ulcer. God is healing peptic ulcer now. Now, I don't know if we have all the time. Hallelujah. We want to take a few instant testimonies. Some of these people, when they stand up from being delivered, many of them will stand up with all kinds. Some of them are having visionary experiences right now. I hear the chains falling, falling. Yeah. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Oh, she packet a kitaya. I hear the chains. Zeko pedi I hear the chains. Now listen, listen. Let me explain this. We always do. But for the sake of those who are coming, don't you think that those who are being delivered here are witches? Are you getting my point? Because as you are standing there, you are receiving your own deliverance. This is a family. This is an oppression of darkness. We don't want to know what the reasons are. They must go. Are you getting my point now? Peptic ulcer in the name of Jesus. Zekoto Payata. God is going to heal peptic ulcer right away. Some of you, listen. Some of you will feel. Let me see how many people with peptic ulcer inside and outside. Just lift your hands. Let me know. All right, quickly. As I pray for you, for many of you, you will feel something lift off you. If that happens to you, run out quickly and come out. Run out quickly, please. Let's save time. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a lot of black substances around the chest of people. I cause that devil of ulcer. I command the wound heal now. Heal and close up now. Heal and close up now. Not later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Regina. Regina. Who is Regina? Regina. Please, when I call your name, quickly, quickly, hurry up. Regina. Shake it to butter. Jesus. 
The Lord is setting your family free from witchcraft. Are you hearing me? This is what God is doing. This lady is going to begin to cough out things. Please take her outside. Come. She's going to begin to cough out things. Out of her now. Take her outside, please. Please clean this up. The Lord is setting your family free. Look at me. You will begin to see dramatic things happen in your family because this has been the finger of darkness. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let there be healing. Let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, there's someone, there's someone here. You feel movement around your right leg you literally feel like an object like a snake moving around especially when you're on your bed who is that person the lord is revealing to me please quickly let's save time once i mention your case just come out quickly so that whether you are inside or outside let's just hurry up very quickly we don't have time goodness help us lord the devil is in trouble tonight <laughs> Zekoto. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. You are the person? Okay, hold on. You've been having this pain. Please tell us, how has it been? Yeah, it started from here. Listen, listen, please. For about three years now. About three years. What do you feel, sir? Feel pain here. Uh -huh. They scanned, so nothing. They scanned, there was nothing. And you feel it moving? Yes, up to now. I'm even... Up till now, even now as you are talking. Watch it disappear now. Watch it disappear. You, you are an elderly man. You get my point. So you will not come and be lying when it's not done. But you watch and see what the power of God will do. Because they scanned it medically. Goodness, please let me do something quickly. I see this lady wearing a crown. Let it go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on her. Anybody, lay your hands Thank you, Jesus. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, let her go now. All our workers are anointed. It doesn't matter who lays hands on them. Out! An anointed hand is upon you and you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. The Lord Jesus brings you healing. Complete healing. Thank you, Jesus. I want to rebuke that spirit right now. That devil of darkness, let him go right now. In the name of Jesus. Wow, something is happening to you. You feel something happening to you? In the name of Jesus Christ. Cabro That devil, go! Now in the name of Jesus. Can you walk now? Just shake your leg. You feel pain? Only here. Where? Right here. All right, lay your hands. Lay your hands, lay your own hands there. The power of God is going through you, that very place. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause pain. Tell me, do you feel any pain there? You feel any pain there? It's going. It's going, right? It's going, right? Look at him smiling. It's going, right? Now, check it. Check it. Thank you. Thank you. What is happening? Check it. Yes, so Check it. Keep it clean, the it's going. It's going. It's going. It will go. Everything will leave. Thank you, Jesus. Now bend down. Go ahead. Bend down. Just no, not kneel down. Just bend down. Up and down. Exercise. It. Yes. And watch the pain leave. Any pain. Any pain. Come on now. Give Jesus strength. Any pain there. Now. It's going. It's going. Where? Where exactly? You should be totally healed. What did the doctors tell you? These are demonic things. About, about, about six. Six years. Five or six scanning. Anytime, listen. Anytime you scan, you see the doctors checking, checking. And they tell you, we don't know what is wrong. Save yourself headache. Just come for prayers quick. Because it's the classic sign that this is the finger of God. This is the finger of Satan. It's exactly three years. It's exactly three years. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I'm healed. 
in Jesus name now check yourself check yourself check yourself go ahead hit hit yourself there that's what I want until you don't feel any pain what do you feel everything when everything when everything disappears look at God healing Regina Madam, ah, now wow, look at the spirit of death lingering over you. The devil would have taken your life in an accident. It would have been an accident, a bike accident. A car would hit you and kill you. That would be the end of it. Are you married? Where's your husband? We have to pray for him too. But well, let me pray for you. I cast that spirit of death. Go! No death in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your mom feels movement. Hold my hands. We set her mom free right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's somebody, please listen. This, this is where the pain is. The Lord is showing me. Just this side. I don't know whether it is, it's a bump, it's a pain, it's a swelling. Very serious at this side of your neck. Please, who is that person? The Lord is healing that person right now. The Lord is healing that person right now. Very quickly, the Lord is healing that person. The Lord is healing that person right now. Please, quickly, quickly, let's save time. The Lord is healing that person right now. Quickly, the Lord is healing that person. Come, you are the first person God will heal. The devil wants to bring madness on you. Hold on, look at me first. Don't show me your back. You, wait. The devil wants to bring madness on you. This is how you would have seen this guy. I don't know who knows him. You would have seen him walking on the street. Because it's a, sometimes you sit. Do you have any feeling? Maybe you are not yourself. You have those. Yes, sir. You have those kind of feelings. Sometimes you feel as if you don't even. It's like you don't know. Yes. This is madness. This thing would have come upon you last year. It was because of the hand of God. And the devil was determined that this year, this madness must follow you. But tonight, God will deliver you. You believe me? We have to pray for you. Because I'm seeing you tied in the spirit. This is what I'm seeing. Tied completely. God is touching someone there. Bring the lady. Let hope rise. I command that madness. Go! Right now. I see. Look at what is happening to him. Look at look at this. Look at this. How can somebody just start scratching his head because I said go? This is madness. The devil wanted to put on. Go, 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 go. Out of him right now. Take your devilish madness back to hell. Hallelujah. What's she here for? Let rise. Your neck. Now, all of you, lay your hands. God will heal you right now. Please. Look at the number of people. How can I just guess that your neck is failing you? Lay your hands. The power of God will touch you right now. Bring that lady for me. You must go now. I'm seeing an altar burning. I'm seeing a shrine on fire. I'm seeing a shrine on fire. This is what is happening to this girl. I'm seeing a shrine. A shrine catching fire. Every shrine. Every devil's shrine. Where your name and that of your family member has been taken to. It catches fire now. It catches fire now. Hallelujah. Goodness. God is going to do a fantastic miracle outside. 
I'm seeing a hole in the teeth covering outside. God is filling up supernaturally a hole in the teeth. Please check it. If you confirm you are the one, don't tell us lies here. Please confirm it and come out. God is God is filling holes, holes. Literally, literally, it will close up. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, God wants to do a number of things. Irregular menstruation. God is going to heal a lot of these things. And then, lump. Lump in the breast or around wherever, abdominal region. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. Remember action. When I pray for you, check yourself. Right now, every lump in any part of anyone's body, whether in the breast area, in the back, at the abdomen, around any part of the body, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I cause that growth now. Let it disappear now. Let it disappear now. Let it disappear now. 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 Long go. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to check yourself. Begin to check yourself. Hallelujah. Now let's do this quickly. Every, every other person, if you came here, specifically for a healing miracle please come out and line up here or if you brought somebody please just line up ushers protocol help us arrange them please please be very orderly no fighting let's hurry up while that is happening how many of you have not written your prayer requests please write it quickly quickly write it quickly and let's have it you came specifically whether within Zaria or outside Zaria you came specifically for healing hallelujah specifically for healing please let's save time you can see that we're really out of time we started late hallelujah myself and bishop will minister to you listen please as we pray for you expect the power of god to touch you and as the power of god touches you begin to check yourself as you go back to your seat please come out line up once we pray for the first row just give thanks and the rest will just be praying in tongues worship team you're going to lead us very hot worship as we do this very very quickly hallelujah bishops so we're going to pray for you some of you are coming out what will happen is this wicked spirit that are responsible for these things will leave you are you following me now i know that there are some of you standing in for your loved ones so as we pray call them there are some of you put your phone on speaker when it's time to prophesy tell your loved ones a word is coming wherever they are let the power of god touch them hallelujah bless you worship team you are the great and mighty god so greatly to be praised
thyroid doctors okay okay brain problem because of the thyroid what in the world is thyroid okay but it affects him any okay but but we're going to pray that is a you came here and the lord jesus is going to visit you right now we don't fake what you see here there is a name that is above every other name hallelujah it doesn't matter who lays hands on you brothers and sisters there is an anointing yeah are you getting what i'm saying hallelujah I am serving the living God. Out! His Out! Name Out! Is Jesus Out! Christ. I see him die. This is what I see. He dies and he rose and he gave me victory. What's the problem? My patella are not stable. Your what? Patella. My patella. What in the world is that? Oh, kneecap. Okay. It shifts from her legs. Goodness. Since when? Ten years. Ten years. How do are you a witness? Is you that brought? What what how do how does it shift? She'll fall and can hold on. Look at me. Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. Look at me. Just look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Nikab, I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. No shifting for you again from today. I bring you the authority of the kingdom. And the spirit that sponsors this wickedness out. Now, I command your ligaments. I command everything like Ezekiel 37 to be back. 
Walk. What do you feel? What do you feel? Look at come up. Her ligament for 10 years. She she falls down by herself. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Look at this. Her kneecap used to shift. Her kneecap used to shift. You are, come, come, come up. Who are you to her? Who are you to her? A family friend. You are a what? Family friend. You know her. You know that this is true. Sister, look, look at the girl crying. Could she do this before? She couldn't do this. Her kneecap will shift and she will fall. That devil is a liar. Whatever the devil has taken out of its place, we bring it back in the name of Jesus. See, God is working on her. That wicked spirit, out! Come out right now. How dare you come upon the altar of God? Out! Out! Now, this is the, you see that? I told you many things. There are wicked spirits behind the activities of men. Let's hurry up. They what? They initiated him into what? They gave him food. Then you be seeing spiritual something. You you be seeing spiritual something that you if he tell you you be surprised. Oh, they initiated him. That devil is a liar. Bring him up. Uh -uh, don't 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 please don't cry. Hmm. This is your daughter. It is okay. See, mommy, look, let me tell you. Including you, God will set, God is setting her free. You should be happy. Don't cry. This boy will be delivered right now. Boy, how are you? You are good. They initiated you. Yes. Eh? That are carrying him go. They say they should carry him. That they will not allow him to go to, to stay for that school. And me, I want him to be there. You look at this. Hallelujah. That, that this water is blood. If they are playing, you'll be telling them that see this thing, see this thing. You'll be very function and mommy. Listen, it's not the fault of the boy. This is this is demonic. Are you getting my point? This is why Jesus brought you here today. Keep in the house, whatever you keep in the house, he will not be there when you kept it. But if he enter, he knows where he sits and he will carry it. No matter where you keep it. Yes. You used to steal. What does he do with it? He, he was even at times the father kept ten thousand. Even I myself, I didn't know that there was money there. He went there, he carried the money with his friend, and they finished the money. How old is he? He's eleven. Eleven years. Eleven. It was 11 in December. Watch your child be delivered upon Mount Zion. Look at this woman. I'll be fasted 21 days. They will tell me that I, even I myself have been seeing a hand holding him. I'll be forcing myself, calling him, he should come back. He will not turn back to look at me. The, the man will be holding him going. And one woman say that he cannot come out of this. But I believe that the God has served that he can do for me. That is why I'm here. I believe. So let hope rise. His darkness dwells in the holy. at me he speaks english he speaks english say after me jesus jesus i love you i love you from today from today i set myself free i set myself by the power of the blood by the power of the from any covenant any covenant and any initiation any initiation from today i belong to jesus 
I belong to you. Satan. Satan. Pack your load. Pack your load. And go. And go. I have no business. I have no business. With you. With you. I declare. I declare. That I am for Jesus. Satan, you had him. Goodbye. Let him go now. Out! This same thing is happening to some that lady. That's all. It's a family covenant. Are you seeing it now? Are you seeing as I'm praying for him? It's happening to her. It's a covenant. Don't cry, mommy. This is what is happening. How can I be praying for somebody here? The same thing is happening. In the realm of the spirit, there's no distance. They are tied by blood. That's... As he was making this confession, you can see it affecting her too. These are spiritual laws. He said he will kill this one by saying because this one was We don't have all the time. Don't worry, mommy. From today, listen. It's okay. It's okay. Please, please, please. We beg you. Eh? Look at me. I assure you, you will return next week or next miracle service with all these children testifying. Boy, look at me. Can you see those people again? No. Can you see them again? No. You can't see any of them again. You will never see them again. And the same way you have been set free, I set that lady free now. Leave her alone. No, no, no. I'm not talking to you people. I'm speaking to the spirit. Go! Now! How can it know that I'm talking? Am I not talking to everybody here? Madam, it's okay. I need to set you free. Huh? I'm seeing your head tied with a snake. You see snakes now? Even snakes, even devil. Hold on. Do you know me, madam? Have I ever seen you? How did I know that snake is tying you? This is your own because. We need to pray for you too. Oh, that girl. What's the problem? Leave her. Ah, uh ah, -uh, is that why you're holding her? Just leave her alone. Let's pray, please. We have to hurry up. Goodness. Don't worry, don't worry. God will heal you right now. Shout, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Are you ready? I hear the chains falling. Oh. I, I hear the chains falling. It's alright. Mommy, you are free. You and your family, salvation comes to you this I night. In Jesus' name. She's okay, she's free. Please, while this is happening, start passing your prayer request. Inside, outside, please, quickly, start passing your prayer request. If you've not written it, write it. When we are prophesying, you are free to call your loved ones and let them connect. Or if you have whatever point of contact, no problem, it's scriptural. Sometimes he will pick a knife that he wants to kill his See another episode here. What? He will pick a knife that he wants to kill his immediate elder brother. He will pick a knife that wants to kill him. My brother, how are you? Well done. You love Jesus? You Wait now. He's not the one. Look at me. Look at me. We give people here, among other things, spiritual intelligence. You understand? No man can just get up. Please, while you're listening, be passing your prayer request. God answers prayers in miraculous ways here. In case you wanted to write something and you've not written it, please write it quickly. Whatever it is. So, he's, he, you didn't come for yourself, just for him. My brother, how are you? What's your name? Clement. Clement. You love Jesus? Yes. You'll be delivered right now. Alright? He carried knife to kill who? His elder brother. Why? Just like that. I was in school. They called me. They had to lock him. They released him yesterday so that they locked him in the police station for three days because he carried knife to kill his brother. 
so they released him yesterday so that he will come for this miracle service the devil is a liar brother look at me you will be set free right now you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all the Let him go now. Every foul devil. In the name of Jesus. Go. Every desire to Nobody tell you you must remain SS or AS for the rest of your life. I'm not negating medicine, but I'm telling you there is power to change it. If this is the only miracle you have, I know many people who cannot marry today because they said they are SS. We will change it. If God cannot do it, then He is not God. But I think God is able, isn't it? Hallelujah. I change this SS now. The next time is tested, let it be found AA. Hepatitis, go! In the name of Jesus. As you're guarding the request, just begin to bring it. We have to kill many birds with one stone. Please, hurry up. We really apologize for the time. You can see how much the time is constrained. We can't do much.
Bishop, you come and help me, please. Some of you can see move, please, Bishop. Let's so that we'll tidy it up. Okay, let's, let's go, don't worry. Jesus. Just look at me.
problem. We don't have all. She has an incision. They did an incision for her. Native doctor. And don't worry, please. We don't have all the time for the explanation. Whatever it is, Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' name. Go! Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free now. Hallelujah. Please, we don't have all the time. Bishop, come. Hallelujah. We are going to pray on this request. Please stand up. Please bear with us. But every part of this meeting is important. Please, please and please. Just two more things and we're out of here. You can see how the time constraint. There is so much we want to do, but... Hallelujah. Now listen. God answers prayers in dramatic supernatural ways here hallelujah and as we pray i like you to stretch your hands towards the altar hallelujah and just pray in tongues lots of miracles will start happening to people and for your family members after that i'll now speak into your life this is the best part of the meeting stretch your hands please stretch your hands even as we pray thank you jesus to celebrate these miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Some of the requests look impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For we are celebrating the miracles, the successes in the name of Jesus. None will go unanswered in the name of Jesus. 
unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly we present this request in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus name hallelujah give Jesus a shout of praise please stand up everybody inside and outside Hallelujah. He sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them. The Bible says, believe the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. As I speak over your life, I want you to believe. Please, please believe and return with mighty testimonies. We don't have all the time to do the things we want to do. But we want to challenge thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Listen, and the Bible says, and whatsoever Adam called them, that's what they became. Whatsoever Adam called them. The Bible says he brought the animals to him to see what he will call them. And he told Job, hast thou commanded thy morning? We're about to speak. Prophecy is very powerful, brothers and sisters. This is the moment where everyone can participate, including your loved ones who are not here. Hallelujah. Every terminal disease in this place, everything called terminal disease, everything called terminal disease, in the name that is above all names, I curse you now in the name of Jesus. I curse you now in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, that sickness leaves your body now. 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 Every SS an AS genotype right now the Lord who has done it uncountable times in this place my God let SS and AS change to AA now change to AA now change to AA now change to AA now with medical proof change to AA now Every HIV in this place, anyone with any deadly virus, HIV, cancer, diabetes, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. Be healed now with medical proof. Be healed now. I command your spirit responsible. Go, go, in the name of Jesus. Everything that has tied your progress. Everything that has tied your progress. In the name that is above every other name. I lose you from it now. I lose you from it now. I lose you from those chains now. Now. Anyone here trusting God for a job? Both for you and your loved ones. Hey, Prateka, ba, 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 ba. We release miracle jobs now. We release miracle jobs now. I speak it into your life. I command it into your destiny. I command it into your family. Receive it now. Receive it now. Hallelujah. Every spirit of delay that is working in the life of anyone here. Things you should have accomplished. Something has pulled you down. There are levels you would have been right now. I command right now, according to the anointing of the spirit upon my life. Let there be acceleration now. Acceleration now. Acceleration now. I challenge the powers 
that hold you down. Let them go. I challenge the forces. I challenge the altars. I challenge the acts of witchcraft. I release you now. Anyone's marital destiny. Hear me. For you and for your loved ones. Anyone's marital destiny that has been tied down. Whether you are married or not. There are people who are married. It's like they are not married. There are others that should marry. And there are powers that have said you will not get married. This night, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I open up marital doors. I open up marital doors. God protected me. I open up marital doors. I open up marital doors. Thank you, Jesus. I pray everything responsible for inexplainable academic failure. You are doing your best. You write exams. The result comes out and you know it's not your own. I prophesy right now upon your life whatever is not your own, I take it out of your life. Whatever result that is not your own, I take it out in the name of Jesus. I command corrections. I command adjustments in the name of Jesus. For those who have been victimized by any lecturer, you are supposed to get A. They gave you E. I command, let there be a restoration. That restoration must happen. Hallelujah. Anyone barren here? Low spam count, fibroid, whatever it is, I don't care what it's called. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, return with your miracle children. Return with your miracle children. Every barren womb be open now. Hallelujah. All the ladies here that are going to every devil called painful menstruation or irregular menstruation. I don't want to know what the name is. I don't care how long it has been. From this night, I challenge the altars responsible. Be free. Be free. Be free. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances in the name that is above all names. In 2014, we prophesy, let doors beyond your imagination, we open them now. Now, financial doors, financial opportunities, every yoke, every curse, every spell that brings poverty despite your giving i curse it now hallelujah i pray every dead spiritual life in this place there are some of you you came here as a matter of life and death i command every dead spiritual life let an unction come upon you right now as i speak i fire it back in the name of jesus prayer life come alive now come alive now come alive now what life come alive now 
let the spirit of revelation come upon you now come upon you now that anointing of favor that can come upon a man's life many of you don't understand I want to activate something in your life I pray that anointing of favor that can separate a man for no reason I pray as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, may that man do hit you now may it come upon your life I pray for your family members whatever the devil said they will not get this year whatever project building project house project whatever has tied your family i prophesy lord god of heaven let there be a rain of testimony rain of testimony whatever you have lost and whatever your family members have lost some of you have lost relationships some of you opportunities let there be a restoration now a restoration now hallelujah and I pray that that presence of God that goes with a man I pray for every ministry represented here every ministry that is represented here I command begin to move in strange levels of unction strange levels of wisdom strange levels of revelation i release angelic encounters i release prophetic encounters in the name of jesus now lift your hands i want to activate the gift of the spirit we have a few minutes very very few but lift your hands hallelujah i'm just going to prophesy many people will receive impartations of different kinds of gifts there are some of you that need activation right now in the name of jesus Rakatatata. take it now take it now take it now take it 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 give the prophecy take it gift of healing take it inside and outside receive it healing anointing miracle working anointing prophetic anointing apostolic anointing entrepreneurial anointing take it take it leadership mantle take it prophetic revelation take it take it I command your eyes to be open may you see what others don't see anyone marked for death in this place anyone marked in the spirit realm for death in the name of the Lord Jesus I cast that spirit now 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 now, 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 spirit of death, go, 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 go. Thank you, Jesus. May you return next week with dramatic testimonies whatever you wrote here as your prayer request i prophesy according to the anointing in the name of jesus may your hand receive it may you walk in it hallelujah listen to me keep standing I'm going to make an altar call right now inside and outside there are many people that need the Lord Jesus Christ 
you have seen the works of the kingdom right now i want to give you an opportunity there may be a number of you who have never made a decision for jesus especially many of you outside some of you were invited for the first time there are some of you who have given your heart to the lord but for some reason you found yourself derailing now is the time to call you back home no one condemns you but we're giving you an opportunity i'm going to count one to five no matter how far you are please don't let anybody stop you the name of the lord is a strong tower one start running now please leave your seat and come out two outside don't let anybody stop you find your way to the front no matter how far quickly 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 god bless you they are coming god bless you they are coming god bless you they are coming coin only appreciate them they are coming don't let the devil stop you don't let your friends stop you this is the beginning of a great journey young and old everyone you are invited you're most welcome god bless you hallelujah look at me thank you very much for this bold decision god bless you as you come keep coming hallelujah even if you are still outside as god is speaking to you come don't let anybody um stop you from receiving this great blessing hallelujah thank you so much it's my pleasure to lead you to the lord jesus christ this is an experience that you will never recover from hallelujah the lord desires to use you he desires to make a mighty tool out of you and that you spend eternity with him i'd like you to lift your right hand and say this from the depths of your heart you're not reciting a poem this is a real experience you are talking to a real person say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart i confess that i cannot help myself tonight i make jesus lord of my life i repent of my sins i receive remission right now i invite jesus to come into my heart be the lord of my life save me cleanse me wash me holy spirit come and live in me do wonders through my life from today i make progress never to return to my past i'm free of every guilt i'm free of every condemnation in the name of the lord jesus christ now let me pray for you father thank you for these ones every wicked spirit that keeps them in sin i curse it now i declare that this decision they have made will be authentic make mighty men and women out of them i curse every spirit every foul devil that is responsible for keeping you in any state of life you do not want in the name of jesus i set you free and i declare that from today you are making spiritual progress in jesus name god bless you congratulations welcome to the biggest family please i'd like you to follow the ushers the gentlemen waving their hands to you they'll welcome you and they'll give you some instructions god bless you in the name of jesus hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching